Hmm. What recipe should I do this time? I know. How about one that might just conjure some dead Civil War soldiers or even the Tooth Fairy maybe at the same time? Welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels with your hosts, Sean and Marianne Gaunt. <laughs> Hi guys, Marianne from Panic D Videos again with another haunted history recipe for you. Today we're going to be making hardtack, which was basically the food source that they had during the whole Civil War. Uh, every one of the soldiers had a ration of 10 of these hardtack biscuits a day. So today, we're going to go ahead and try to figure out what would that have been really like. For us to do that, we're going to need some ingredients. And surprise, surprise, they're very few and far between. See, most of the time, it was constituted of just flour and water. Sometimes they would add a little bit of salt as well. So that's what we're going to do because I know that Sean's going to want to have a little bit of flavor in there. Uh, they didn't always put salt in because salt, of course, absorbs moisture, and so the more moisture that would get absorbed, the worse off it would be and the less it would last. Some of these hard tacks from the Civil War have actually still been uh, in existence, and it's over 155 years later, and you can still find some of these, and you can still eat them. There was a guy who ate one not that long ago. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, we're going to have five cups of flour. To that, we're going to add one cup of water and one tablespoon of salt. So let's go ahead and mix that in. I'm going to put the salt in first and just kind of mix that in a little bit before I put my water in just to make sure it gets a little bit of salt everywhere. I'm going to put my one cup of water in, and I'm going to mix it up. This is going to be very dry. some time, uh, more, about 20 minutes or more. 
and it was not getting any better. So we did add a little bit more water. So I added about three or so tablespoons of water. I didn't really measure, just kind of added a little bit. So that's my estimation. And so now I have kind of a lump uh, of dough and that's a little bit better. Um, it's kind of like really super dry salt dough. Basically, that's what it is though, right? So that's what we're gonna use. Next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna roll it out and turn it into some biscuit. All right, so I've put down a little bit of wax paper. Not really necessary. They didn't use wax paper in the Civil War, but I'm gonna try to smooth this down a little bit. See, this is why they wouldn't have used that. It's moving. Super, super dry. All right, forget this wax paper. Sean really wanted me to use wax paper, but I washed the counter. It's all nice and clean, and this is just rolling around, so I'm just gonna take it off. Let's try it on the plain counter. At least it's not going anywhere this time. It's uh, definitely not pretty to look at. We want to roll this until we get it to be about a half inch thick. Right now we're at about an inch thick, so we got to double this down here. So we're probably gonna double it in size, but we're gonna take it down quite a bit. It's not supposed to taste that good either, so you know. They do say that most of what you taste is what you can actually see. So if it doesn't look appetizing, it probably won't be. But uh, they didn't usually eat this just plain, so. Well, the next step is to cut this into smaller pieces and uh, then we're going to put them on the pans to cook them. Now I am going to put a little bit of flour, I know this is already so dry, I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my baking pans because that's what I do when I make breads so that they don't stick instead of using regular uh, cooking spray or anything like that. This is a way we do our specialty holiday breads for our family recipes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of flour to the bottoms of these pans. Just like that. And I'm, you can use a knife, uh, make them nice and straight edges. I'm gonna give mine a little bit of a wavy edge, not that it's probably gonna matter, um, but I'm gonna cut these up. Now the way that they made them was to make them into three by three squares. So I'm just gonna kind of try to go along with my shape of my bread here, my dough. So they're not gonna be exactly pretty for some of them, but they'll do.
uh, from the Civil War here, says that this was going to make about 15 of these squares. And I was a little bit concerned that it wasn't going to, but check it out. I have 15 squares and a little extra here on the side. I'm making an extra one. Okay, so once you have your three by three squares, the next thing that you have to do is you have to put some holes in it. We've all seen saltine crackers, I'm sure. They all have those little holes in it. The idea is that the extra holes in between will allow it to continue to bake more evenly. So uh, the ones from the Civil War had four by four. So there were 16 holes in each one, uh, four across and four down. So we're gonna go ahead and do that next. I'm just going to use a uh, bamboo skewer here to do this, but they do have tools for this that they made during the Civil War. I don't know if they still have them today, or you could use a fork or something like that as well. recipes where you put it in at 250 for four hours. So they say that the longer you cook it uh, over the shorter period of time, the longer they're going to last. Um, they also say that you can do it at the 425, take them out, let them cool, then put them back in at 250 for another two hours, and that will ensure length as well. The longer that they bake, the longer they're going to last. Some of them from the Civil War, remember, have lasted till today, over 155 years later. All right, so let's get this in the oven and get them baking. All right, so most of the recipes don't say anything about flipping them over, but I did find a couple versions that say, hey, halfway through, flip them over. So we have about 30 seconds, and then it's gonna be time to flip these things over. All right, let's see how they're coming. They're definitely cooking down nicely. <laughs> excitement things. So uh, back uh, in the day, uh, during the Civil War, and actually even before that, uh, there was a company in Massachusetts called Bents, and they were actually the ones who supplied 
the hardtack for the Civil War for the Union soldiers. Uh, they were also used in the 1940s or so during one of the World Wars. Uh, they were contracted also to make cookies for the soldiers as well, which led to the broken cookie idea. And all of the regular cookies would get sent off to the military, and all the broken cookies would get bagged and sold in their store. And so that's where they got the broken cookie idea from. So if you ever see a bag of broken cookies, that's why. Uh, so some of the Civil War reenactors, some of the Civil War reenactors have a, a running joke amongst them when they're talking about where to get hardtack or who has the best hardtack. Their old big thing is, you gotta get bent. Just go get bent. Some also uh, of the items uh, for that, that's kind of actually a sad thing. Uh, the Bent Cookie Factory, Cookie and Biscuit Factory, actually got bought out a couple years ago. They sold, uh, and the new company was not going to make the hardtack anymore, and they're the ones who supply all the hardtack to the Civil War reenactors. So unless they've gotten them to come back in and try to make them again, we might have lost the company that has been making the hardtack for the U.S. government for over 150 years. Pretty sad. One other little thing that I wanted to mention was, uh, if you remember, I added a little bit of extra water, and I was thinking, oh, that's kind of not really that good. I'm messing with the recipe again. Then I got to thinking. There was one of the places that I saw a recipe, and they basically said that, uh, you know, you'd get a really good workout by making these, and so sometimes you get a little bit hot and sweaty. And one of the companies actually lets their, their people sweat into the hardtack as they mix it. Gets that little bit of extra salt and water, I guess. When you would take hardtack for sailing, you would actually make it six months before you were gonna leave. You'll make it good and dried out. Depending on, um, how you store your hardtack. If you store it incorrectly, you can have a few problems. The Civil War soldiers, by the way, had some of these as issues. Uh, what happened was, or at the beginning, they were using leftovers from a previous war. And so some of them were moldy. Some of them had meebles in them. You know, the good stuff. Well, what happens is uh, most of the time we take these and we can't eat them just regular. They're much too hard. That's where the whole idea that I brought up at the beginning was from. You know, the tooth fairy. It, you know, if you bite right into one of these, you'll probably crack your teeth and then the tooth fairy just might have to come and visit you. So the Civil War soldiers, they would take the butts of their rifles and they would pound them to break them into smaller pieces and then they would dip them and soak them in water or coffee um, to soften them up. And then sometimes they would take the ones that they had dipped in the, in the water and they had um, let them soak in the water. They would then fry that in um, pork grease, pork fat, and then they would eat that. They would have fried hardtack then. And some would even turn it into puddings. And one uh, recipe that I found took that and soaked it in water, and then they mixed it with some sugar and some brandy or whiskey. One of those. And they would actually make a dessert out of it. So I mentioned that sometimes they'll soak it in coffee. So what would happen was they would take those little uh, hard tacks, they would drop it in their coffee to let it soak in and get softer so that they could chew it better. Uh, and they would sometimes see weevil larva and, and that start to float to the surface. Basically they had come out of the hard tack and then they drown. So they would just siphon those off and then they'd have their coffee and their hard tack. Yum. <laughs> All right, time to get out our hardtack. All right, so there's our hardtack. Looks pretty good. And they're hard.
All right, so if you want to try your hand at making some Civil War hardtack, I'll put the link down below uh, for the recipe itself, which, how hard is it, right? It's flour, water, and salt. But I'll put the recipe down below, including some of the tips that I have as well. All right, parrot peeps. So if you have any comments, please leave them down below. If you've ever made your own heart attack, you've ever heard of another story about how the Civil War soldiers or anyone else has ever used the heart attack, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. And until next time, thanks for watching. Let us know if you like this video by hitting that thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, Support our channel by hitting that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified the next time there's a video from Panic D Videos. Thanks for watching. Happy hunting.